Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Tutorial Thursday. We are going to go over how to use Twitter's API, just the basics and stuff of this for the part one of my Twitter, I guess, uh, series. So for those of you, uh, most people know what Twitter is. If you're not familiar, it's just a place where people can post updates on themselves and do like tweets like this. Um, so Twitter's API is actually one of the best APIs to use in terms of uh, pulling data and just getting data in general because there's almost no restrictions on it. A lot of APIs like Facebook, for example, Facebook is very, very, very private with their data and their users' data. So when you use their API, there's not much you can really do with it. The same with Instagram and other social media sites. But Twitter, because most people's profiles are on public and a lot of tweets are public as well, you can pretty much do a lot of different things with it. Now, if you're not familiar with APIs, I encourage you to go and check out the last tutorial. It wasn't the last tutorial, but we did a tutorial in the past about how to use APIs, and we built a simple bot that can um, pretty much pull live weather statistics for whatever city you're in. So if you're not familiar with, familiar with APIs, go and check that one out. It'll give you the details of pretty much how APIs work. So the first thing we're going to need to do for Twitter's API is we want to make sure that we have a Twitter account. So if you don't have a Twitter account, you can make one. And then what you're going to do after that is you are going to make a Twitter developer account. So if you go to apps.twitter.com, you can pretty much make your account and uh, create a developer account with your original account. And what you're going to want to do from there is click create new app. So when you click create new app, each app is pretty much for its own purpose. So let's say, for example, you're doing a project. Um, and by the way, Twitter's API is really good for hackathon projects. Uh, just because you can get so much data for it, especially people that are interested in machine learning and data science, highly recommend it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create an application. So I'm just going to make Forge Twitter uh, app one. Uh, you don't really have to put really legitimate information in here. So I'm just going to just copy and paste that one in for there. Uh, website, whatever. I'll just put my personal website. Uh, yeah. So let's get started. Huh. Okay, gotta make sure you put the HTTPS there. Yep. Cool. So once you uh, create your app, you're going to notice that there's a lot of information here and uh, it might be a bit confusing. So you can see we have details of our account. We have callback URLs. We have a consumer key and we have a bunch of different other URLs and stuff like that, which we'll be going over a bit later in further tutorials. So you can also we see we can edit all the um, information we put in but the place we're going to want to go to right now is keys and access tokens so this is pretty important so these uh keys and access tokens these are very 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 uh private so these are sort of like your password in terms of accessing twitter's api so when you make a call to twitter's api it's going to want to know who's making the call uh for various reasons number one if you're trying to make an, uh you know an inappropriate call or anything like that if you're trying to make too many calls if you're going over rate limits and stuff like that um um, so this is how they track all those things. So you're going to have a consumer key and a consumer secret as well as your access tokens. So these four things pretty much are needed in order to call Twitter's API, um, legitimately at least. So what we are going to do is we're going to go over um, a simple framework called Tweepy. And Tweepy is pretty much, uh, or Tweepy, however you want to say it, Tweepy is pretty much uh, one of the most standard uh, Python libraries when it comes to using Twitter's API. And it really just streams line, streamlines the entire process. So I'm going to be doing this with Tweepy. You can use their, no matter what language you're in, there are a bunch of different frameworks you can use to use Twitter's API. Or you can just make the calls yourself, uh, you know, using like URL lib or something like that, depending on the language you're using. But I think it's always easier to just go with a, a well-known library that uh, has a lot of, for example, contributors and stuff like that because all the issues most of the issues you'll run into have been ironed out so I am here on my local machine so what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much gonna create uh, let's get rid of that stuff I am going to create a new directory so Twitter tutorial one and in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a virtual environment for so when you use Python uh, you know, a lot of the times Python libraries, depending on what you're trying to do with Python, will conflict and stuff like that. So I use uh, virtual n 
virtual environments to sort of keep my Python libraries um, streamlined. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use uh, this virtual environment and any lo Python libraries I install in this virtual uh, environment will be contained to that virtual environment. So if I if I try doing another project after this, um, I won't have access to the same libraries that I installed using this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate it. So we can see here that my virtual environment is activated. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use go ahead and use pip, which is a Python library manager to install Tweepy using their in exact instructions. Uh, just pip install Tweepy, and there we go. So now if I type in, uh, if I go into a Python shell and I type something in like import Tweepy, it should work, which it did. So now we can quit out of this. Cool. So everything looks like it's been installed properly. If you have problems installing Tweepy, uh, as a lot of problems do come up, um, usually the best solution is to just Google the error. Uh, there are just way too many uh, different er possible things that can go wrong. And if you're on Windows, you might have to find a specific Windows solution to install Tweepy. So. Tweepy, the good thing about them is they have really good documentation. So for example, we can see here they have very uh, basic, you know, getting started code. So um, what you can do is you can literally just copy and paste this code in and just get an idea of how Tweepy works. So let's create like a, this is hello. Let's just quickly make a file here and let's copy and paste this in and let's just go through how this works so the first thing you're not um the first thing you're going to notice is it wants to get your um your consumer key your consumer secret your access token and your access token secret so what you're going to do is you're going to head over to your <coughs> you're going to head over to your uh app settings so then you're just going to paste those in in quotes so let's get them all in there And these are very private, so I'm going to regenerate my tokens after uh, I finish this video because you don't want anyone getting access to this because then they can call the APIs if they were you. It's sort of like stealing your password type of thing. Uh, and you can always regenerate your um, your tokens and stuff like that just in case, for example, like I'm doing where everyone can see it in a video. What we're going to do is we're just going to try... No, I will not buy that. We're just going to uh, try running this now. So if we type in python hello.py, we're going to notice that a little error comes up here. So as you can see, we have a Unicode error. Um, and basically what's happening here is a lot of tweets contain really weird characters, sometimes emojis, sometimes characters in another language that doesn't belong uh, to, you know, what your, what your ID or maybe your... Um, your terminal is accustomed to displaying. So what you can just do here is you can encode it into UTF-8, uh, and I think that should, uh, so pretty much, I'll go over what this is in a second, but I think that should solve the error, yeah. So you can see here, what we did was we just uh, got a couple of tweets. So let's go through it step by step. The first thing we're doing is we're creating an OAuth handler, and that is comprised of your consumer uh, key and secret. The next thing we're doing is we are setting the access key and access token, access sorry, access secret and access token um, in your auth header uh, to the ones that you found on your profile. And then what we're doing is we're pretty much creating an API object. So we're saying, hey, uh, let's establish a connection uh, with my security information and um, we store that connection in this variable API. Now, what we're doing here is, the first thing we're doing is we're calling the api.home timeline function. And what that'll do is it will return um, pretty much your home timeline. And your home timeline is essentially this. If I go home, um, these are gonna be the posts that it's gonna to be getting uh, stuff like this which is just a lot of CP24 and coding stuff in my case um, and a lot of Starcraft stuff but that's pretty much what we're getting so these tweets for example uh, Trudeau touts 2017 defense plan is answered blah 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 we can see here that was the most recent post and it sort of just goes down uh, as we go now you're gonna notice in the code here um, pretty much it gets a specific amount of tweets and uh, what we're doing is we're printing the text of each tweet. Now it's important to know that each tweet actually comes with a lot of different uh, data. For example, where the tweet was posted, when the tweet was posted. And 
if you want to know, for example, um, you know, different APIs that you can call or different functions, you know, this is just the home timeline functions, but Twitter's API has a bunch of different functions you can use. The best place to go to is the documentation. And I really like the documentation for Twitter. Uh, it's very well done. It's very informative. You can see things like rate limits, etc., etc. etc. So if we go to the API reference, we can see a lot of different posts, uh, a lot of different information that you can pull. So let's see if we can find the home timeline uh, that we actually pulled ourselves. Uh, so you can see here there's a lot of information on like rate limits and stuff like that. So here's the rate limits for every single uh, call that they have. User timeline. Okay, so here it's user timeline. And for example, you're allowed to make um, per window and it believes the windows are 15 minute lengths if you have a user. If if you're registered as I think uh, an app account, I can't remember how you register that, you get a bit more leniency with your APIs and you can call more frequently. So for example, we can get our timeline, uh, it looks like 900 times every 15 minutes and every and you'll be able to see. So if we could just, if we could just find where, um, where to get the, uh, get the tweet timelines, here we go. So get, uh, ho okay, home timeline, something different. So get home timeline, we can see here that um, there's a lot of different parameters. So we can get how many posts we wanna see on our, on our timeline. So I think the default, uh, depending on how many posts here, it looks like the default's around five or six or seven. And it looks, oh, the default is 20, okay. And it must be less than equal to 20, uh, 200. Now you can get 200 tweets uh, per call and let's say, for example, you're allowed to make around 100 calls uh, every 15 minutes. That's 400 calls an hour. And if every single call you can uh, get 200 tweets, that's 400 times 200, which is around 80,000 tweets per hour that you can pull. And you can see here that if we scroll down, so these are all the different parameters you can have. So we can have count how many tweets we want, since ID, so this is uh, an ID, um, where you can limit how far back you go to get tweets, uh, limit how far in, you know, how, what date up to you want to get tweets for, um, stuff like that. So then we see example responses. So this is actually all the data we are getting from a single post when we, um, from a single tweet that we get here, you know, if you get 200, if you get 200 tweets per call, you're gonna be getting 200 of like all of this pretty much. So we can see here what we got was, um, what it has, it has a lot of different data, like when it was created, whether um, the user that you're getting it for has favorited or not, the actual tweet ID, um, the text, the retweet count, the if it has a geolocation added to it, whether it was uh, the user has retweeted it, then you can get information on the person that actually tweeted it. Um, so, you know, for CP24, we would get like a CP24 thing here and then a bit of information about them. So there's a lot of data and a lot of different calls will cross over in data. For example, if you're getting user timeline tweets versus like um, a user's information, uh, you know, usually their tweets will contain most of their information uh, anyway. So depending on what you're trying to build, you can be very, very optimal with which, um, you know, endpoints you decide to use for what data and stuff like that. But this is pretty much just the basics of how to use it. And I remember when I went to my first hackathon, you know, I wanted to, I thought APIs were insanely powerful. I thought they were like the coolest thing ever. I mean, you literally can like build something that could just take data from anywhere you want to. And it took me a very long time to like get to the beginning stage where I was just able to do something as simple as pulling your uh, timeline tweets. Um, but once I learned how to do that, you can actually see, I guess, if I were to go to my LinkedIn or if you go to my LinkedIn, I've been to around like seven hackathons and almost every single one of my hackathons that pro uh, the project had to do with Twitter's API because I love doing like big data stuff and I love using, um, you know, Twitter's API to get that data. So knowing how to use basic things like this is really, 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 really important. It looks good on resumes because APIs will always be relevant. And I encourage you now that you sort of get the gist of it, you know, go around, look at Tweepy. Um, you know, snoop around, see what else you can do, right? See what other what other API calls you can make. Um, 
you know, a lot of different, a lot of different things. There's a lot of different data you can pull from it, and you know, just create a small project out of it. Um, it would look good on a resume. It would enable you the next time you go to a hackathon, or the next time you're working on something with a project. You know, one of my school projects, I was able to incorporate Twitter's API into it because I knew how to do it. And it's, it might seem a bit hard when you first, uh, you know, get used to it. Like all these different calls, all this different data that you're getting back, all these parameters and stuff like that you need to know about. But it just comes down to just really getting there and doing it so some future projects I recommend I think one of my first apps so if we go back to to this one of the first things I did was I pretty much just made a uh, a website that what it does is you type uh, to it's called Twitter compare and it compared to Twitter accounts so um, you would put in your Twitter account I would put in sorry you would put in two different Twitter accounts uh, it's not up and running right now and then it would see you know um, who has more followers it would map out you know the followers the following uh, how many tweets versus how many tweets the peep this uh, you know the uh, people that follow both accounts the you know so people that overlap you know who's following me and you or who are we both following you know just cool information like that uh, and just being able to show it on a simple website so those are all cool projects um, that I would try out if I were you guys and in the next tutorials I want to get more in depth into using uh, Twitter's API so this is just a very overall broad view of how you can get started with it and some future steps um, one of my favorite things to do with Twitter is to create bots uh, so you know bots that can like respond to tweets and stuff like that and I actually made something like that for my company while I was doing an internship uh, in California a couple years ago so I'm gonna walk you through uh, how I did that in the next Twitter series so thanks for watching guys and I hope you guys found this valuable if you have any tutorial Thursday topics you want to suggest I'm gonna leave the feedback form below and yeah thanks for being a forge member let me go to the website just to show it off uh, thanks for being a Forge member, and I'll see you guys next week. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I'm not really used to saying that yet, so cool. Take care, guys.